everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're here with part two of the Cashmere at Canton Sew Along, Canton Moto Jacket Sew Along. Um, and today we're going to start sewing which is very exciting. Okay for today we're going to need to use a few things and I have two products I didn't talk about um, last time that I'm going to talk about this time because they apply to what we are doing today. So today we're going to do our jacket fronts, which means we are going to, by the end of today, we will have both jacket fronts constructed. If you're doing view A, that will include the front pockets. Um, I will tell you if you're doing view B where you can kind of skip ahead. Um, it's just a little bit easier because you don't have to put those pockets in. But we will be putting our front zipper in. We will be attaching all the pieces of our front together today and putting in our front pockets. Um, and then we'll come back next time for more. <laughs> probably for the back and uh, sleeves is my guess, and then kind of putting the body of it together. Um, so that is the plan, I'm trying to break this up into sizable chunks. Okay, so for today, you're going to need your 22 inch zipper or longer, something along those lines. I will be showing you how to shorten this. I'm gonna be shortening mine with um, metal uh, zipper stops that you'll see up close when we come come here to the machine um, How I'm going to go about doing that you will need a needle nose pliers and or another little set of pliers that I'll show you here in just a second um, I'm not sure what they're called. I did get them at Lowe's though. So you can get them at home <laughs> stores with all the other little plier pieces um, And wire cutters and stuff. But anyway, you're gonna need your 22 inch zipper you're going to need your two six inch zippers. Mine are actually seven inch zippers because um, I couldn't um, find six inch. It was either five or seven. So I went the seven inch zippers for my pockets. Um, and I will show you if you have to do the same, how I'm gonna go about um, kind of shortening those as well. Also, we're gonna be, the pieces we're going to be using today are I put these not in a great order to pull out to show you. You're going to be needing piece one and you should have one of those, just one, one of piece one um, and make sure that you have, it should be completely interfaced on the back and make sure that you have your pocket dots um, made if you are making view A. You are also going to need your single piece of piece two which is the middle front Piece one is right center front. Piece two is your middle front. Um, also one of those fully interfaced. Make sure you have your little pocket um, dots marked on that as well. You will need one of your piece three. Piece three is your center front and you actually cut out three of those. Um, the other two get sewn onto the lining. So you need the piece that is fully interfaced for today. Um, it doesn't have any pocket marks, <laughs> but you just need the one piece and it is um, the one that you fully interfaced yesterday. So the other two we can set aside for lining day. Um, you're going to need your two pieces of piece four. And on these, again, I'll show you a little bit closer up here in a minute, but you want to make sure that you have your areas for your pockets interfaced and marked, your dots marked on those. So these are that um, piece one interfacing for, I think you cut six for view A and only four for view B. This is your zipper interfacing. Um, on the other side of your zipper, those pieces are fully interfaced. So on this piece four, you just need to interface where that zipper is going to go. So on both pieces, I've got that zipper interface and I have my um, little dots marked. And then you're going to need pieces five and six, which are your outer pocket, which you need two of those, and your inner pocket. Obviously, if you're making view B, you will not use these. So this is for view A if you're putting the pockets in the front, if you're not doing the crop version. All right. And then on top of that, I am going, this is going to the easiest way to put in zippers, especially when you're dealing with bulky metal zippers that like to not, I never ever pin my zippers in. It just distorts the zipper tape and it makes life miserable. I'm going to be using, um, this is Dritz, but many brands make one. It is a um, wash away wonder tape. It's a quarter inch wide. Um, I will show you this up close when we get there, but it's a double stick tape. This is going to save you when it comes to putting in zippers and keeping everything lined up. Trust me, you will thank me for this, whether you're sewing with pleather, leather, or some other fabric. This stuff is amazing. You're also going to want a Ziploc baggie to store it in so that it doesn't dry out once you're done using what you want to use. 
And then finally, because I'm using pleather, um, I will show you how to, you can pin leather and pleather, you just need to make sure that you're doing it within the seam allowances because it will leave holes that will not go back. So um, another option is to use the wonder clip that a lot of quilters use with the little clips, or if you're cheap like me, <laughs> or I just, not cheap, I just use things around my house. I have binder clips, they work just as well. So I'll be using binder clips to keep my, I don't use a lot of pins when I sew, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but when I do need to match notches for what I'm using, um, while we can use pins for some things, I will show you how to do that. Um, binder clips and or the wonder clips are great for pleather, anything thick really that a pin won't go through, but also for pleather and leather where you don't want the holes to stay. So there we go. Those are the things that we're going to need for today. Um, so yeah, let's come over to the machine. Again, I am using the Bernina 770, which was a machine kindly loaned to me by University of Sewing um, to use for the next year. So I am discovering all the ins and outs of this wonderful machine, but I am sewing on a Bernina 770. So um, let's get to the machine and let's get to sewing. Okay, so let's get our zipper put in. We're starting with um, piece one, which is our right center front. Um, obviously, you may not be able to read that real well since we're going sideways here, but this fits the best on the table. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, so we're gonna have one that's cut regular face up here, and then um, this piece is fully interfaced on the back, and we do have our um, dots marked for our pocket. That's not important right now, but it will be important when we come to do our um, pocket here in a little bit. All right, so what we are going to do is we are going to measure our zipper. I think I mentioned before, um, another thing you're gonna want is some crappy scissors to cut your zipper. <laughs> Don't use good scissors to cut your zippers. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, we've got, and I'm, I may need to mark these just a little bit better so you can see but we have down here our um, notch for our zipper stop. You should have a notch that's right here at the bottom. That we wanna be an eighth of an inch-ish above that mark. And we're gonna be measuring our zipper. It doesn't matter if it's if face down or face up right now because we're just measuring it at the moment. So I'm gonna line up here about an eighth of an inch above I will, let's see, put a, I'm not gonna pin this in, but right here is that notch, right where that pin is. So I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch up above that, and I'm just gonna kind of walk my zipper all the way up here to the top until we get right up here to the top. And I'm gonna mark with one of my pins here, with one of my um, friction pins, just gonna mark right here at the top of the zipper. So it's, I want, I mean, it's kind of curved right now. I'm not marking it straight here. I do wanna mark it straight across, but I'm just gonna mark where the top of the pattern is, okay? Next, grab a, engage here. We want to mark up about a half of an inch above that because that is where, or below that, sorry, because that's where we want our zipper to stop because the seam allowance is a half of an inch. So I'm just going to come down here a half of an inch. So it should be a half of an inch in between those two lines. And it is. And you're wanting to mark it on both sides of your zipper here so that you can easily see what you're doing. Hopefully that's nice and dark so you can see what's going on here. Okay, we are now going to, um, well, unzip this. Because we're gonna be putting, we're gonna be shortening our zipper and putting our zipper stops in. Now I'm gonna show you, I like to use, these are actual zipper, um, zipper top stops. Uh, number five, Antique Brass. I get mine from Wawack. I realize that's a U.S. company, and I don't know. Maybe you can find these on Amazon, um, but look, zipper stop, zipper top stops on Amazon. You might be able to find those internationally. Oh, oh my gosh, that bag was open. Also, 
What's handy to have in your stash is zipper bottom stops. This is also number five. Remembering my zippers are number five zipper, which is what I typically use. These are both in the antique brass colorway. I usually keep antique brass and nickel in my um, stash so that I've got, you know, kind of a silver color. And then those are the two colors I use the most for myself and my daughter, who I primarily sew for. So I've also got these um, zipper bottom stops as well. Um, again, I will link what, where I get mine from Wawak, but again, if you're international, I don't think Wawak um, ships internationally, so maybe start uh, checking Amazon or possibly Minerva. So anyway, I'm going to be using, I'll use these zipper um, stops when we shorten our pocket zippers after I'm done picking up all of these <laughs> zipper stops when I just flew everywhere. If you're new to the channel, um, Tomcat Stitchery is kind of a fly by the seat of your pants type of channel. We've got boo-boos that happen all the time, but that's what happens in the sewing room, right? All right. That was easy to pick up, other than this one that's now stuck in my seam gauge. All right, so that is what I'm gonna be using, but I will, the instructions do tell you how to do it with just a thread um, stop. So I'm gonna show you, I'll, I'll you know demonstrate how to do that as well, or, or talk you through it. I don't know the, I really need to demonstrate that part. Okay, so the first thing, if you're using a nylon zipper, you can sew over your zipper teeth. You don't really need, you know, you could just do a zipper stop with thread, which what you would do this second, this lower line here, I would just take um, a, th a thread and a needle, and I would take my thread through um, twice so that you have four strands all together, and just sew a whip stitch right over this zipper tape in between two teeth. Um, to get a, a good stop there, and that will keep your zipper pull from flying off when you zip up your jacket, which we don't want. But if you've got a metal zipper, um, we do need to re remove teeth. So these are the pliers I was talking about. I don't know what they're called. I like these for taking off zipper teeth, but it could be that you like just to use your needle nose pliers, and we'll be using both of these. Both of these just came from your regular construction store. Um, but I like these because, and these also are wire cutters. I'm sure there's a name for these. This is just chrome nickel from cobalt. It doesn't say what type they are, but I'm actually going to start. I like to have a little bit of extra, um, tape here to play around with. Even though this top line here is the top of my jacket, I am going to start pulling off zipper teeth right above that just because I want a little extra play. It's always hard to get the first one off. I want a little extra play with my zipper tape so I can get it, especially on the uh, left side when worn, I can get it out of the way. Now don't get your finger, but it's basically you're just pinching it and then pulling them off. Sorry about the bouncing camera. I'll do a couple on camera and then I will do, okay. So now take some muscle, you can get out some frustration. But what I'm going to do, <laughs> what I'm going to do is pull these teeth off from this point above this line all the way down to where um, I put my second line. And um, I'm going to go, I'm going to take off the tooth right below this line. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll come right back and show you on both sides and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I have gone ahead and pulled off um, the teeth here in between those two markings. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, and I've gone just right below that bottom marking because we're going to put a stop in in just a second. But now, make sure your zipper is unzipped because you don't want to cut off if your pull is above where you're cutting off. I mean, ask me how I know about that one. Um, because then you basically ruined your zipper. It's impossible to get those pulls back on. So now with crappy scissors, I'm just going to cut off the top part of this tape because I don't need it anymore. And I'm just cutting it right there at that point. So we can throw that top part away. So now I'm going to put in some zipper stops. Now, if you don't have metal zipper stops, what you're going to do at this point is right above this top tooth that you've left. So right at your line that you made here, that's a half an inch down. Again, just take some needle and thread, run the thread through twice so that you'll have four strands of thread. So hopefully that, you know, makes sense. You, you know, thread the needle that means two on each side of the needle and then thread another piece through again. So then you have four 
and um, just do a whole bunch of whip stitches right here around that edge to get it nice and fat and tie it off and that will serve as a wonderful zipper stuff. Or you can use these wonderful little zipper stop, what is it, zipper top stops. That's hard to say. Which look like this. Oh, right into the camera wet. Look like this. So they're like a little U shape, a little horseshoe. Basically all you're gonna do is put them on top of the tape right above that top stop. Take your needle nose pliers and just give it a good pinch. And then I like to go in and give it a real good pinch just for good measure, right there at that line. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. A little pinch to get it to stay and then give it a real good squeeze. And there you go. And this is a friction pin so that um, that will come off. So then when you're all zipped up to the top, your zipper pull doesn't go flying off. Okay, that's easy enough, right? <laughs> all right, so now we can move all of our tools out of the way here. Make sure your baggies are closed. And let's put a zipper in. So before I do too much, we're gonna pull out this Wonder Tape real quick. And we are going to open up the package and put some of this on either side of our, our zipper. All right, so there's a little, you gotta, it's like starting any kind of tape. There we go. Just got to get it started. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So again, this is double sticks tape. So it's really sticky on the bottom side. And then there's a piece of um, paper that covers the top of it. So let me push the piece of piece out here. So I'm just going to start at the bottom and I'm taping this to the outside edge of the zipper tape. And I'm just pressing it down with my fingers as I go. And I'm also going to stop before I get to the top um, because on the left side when worn, the zipper tape gets folded over on itself to finish it off nicely. So I'm gonna stop right here at my, um, right before my bottom marks that I made. So we're just gonna give that a really good press. Then we'll flip it over. And I'm putting this on, I should have said this, the right side. So this is the right side of the zipper is facing up. I should have said that. And I am telling you, this stuff came in so handy when I was making my daughters, so. Definitely the way to go with these heavier zippers, especially with the application that we're doing on all these. So just give it a really good press. All right, that's gonna come in handy here in just a minute. All right, so let's get our piece number one. All this stuff out of the way. Let's get our piece number one. And we've got here, um, this is our, the front is, is right here. This is gonna get sewn into piece four um, when our pocket and stuff gets put in. So now we are just going to sew our zipper in one side. Now, I the instructions are gonna have you leave your zipper together, um, which I think is kind of cool. It actually keeps things lined up really, really well. I normally would separate and put it into each side separately, but I like the way that they did that. And, um, as always, Cashmeret has fantastic instructions, so we're gonna follow along with that. So let's take a minute and let's think about how this zipper is gonna lie in the jacket. This may help you um, think about it. So if we fold over this front edge and just lay it on top of the zipper, this is how the zipper is gonna sit, you know, the zipper is right side up. So with that in mind, 
you just are gonna follow and flip this over like so. So now our zipper is wrong side up. So we're gonna be working with this side of the zipper here first. So what I'm gonna do is just lift it up and I'm just peeling off the one side of the Wonder Tape. Because we don't want the other side sticking to stuff yet. Okay, so now if we flip this right side up, I've pulled off the tape on this side of the zipper. So now I'm gonna start at the bottom, and again, here is my um, notch, and I'm starting an eighth of an inch from that. And I'm just gonna line this up and kind of walk the zipper tape. And as I go up the front of the jacket, I'm just pushing that down because we do come to a curve here. And again, we should extend past the top here because remember we I left a little wiggle room here, but I can see my notch that I made, that little line that I made does line up right here with the cut edge of the jacket. So everything looks pretty good there. Give it a good press. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we are going to sew this down. All right, so like I mentioned, I'm here at my Bernina 770. I have a Teflon foot on. This one is foot 56. Um, I have my regular Guterman Mara thread in. I do have a leather needle in, a size 14 leather needle from Schmetz, or what is that, 90 I think in um, European measurements. Um, it's a imperial, I guess, size 14. <laughs> Why do we do things differently? I don't know. Okay, so we've got our piece here with our zipper stop. Now, this zipper pull is going to get in the way. So we're just going to make sure you keep your it anchored here so you don't accidentally pull away where you've already stuck. Just down a little bit. Um, we'll be starting and stopping so that that gets um, out of the way as we go. So I am going to basically ride the edge of this foot right along the um, the edge of my zipper tape, but I want to get closer to the to the teeth than I am. So I am just going to mess with my needle placement. I'm also sewing with a um, stitch length of. of um, 3.5. Okay, I'm going all the way over to the side. All right, I'm going all the way over to the side of, the, of my foot here so that I can um, make sure that I'm um, getting as, not too close, because you do want to see a little bit of tape here, but as close as I can. All right, so I am going to, my machine is set to backstitch at the beginning here. And now we are just gonna sew down and I am just following my zipper foot along um, those teeth. And then if you can get that pull, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to. Okay, if you can't get your pull up while the um, needle is still in, just take it off. Oh, this machine cuts and everything. This is fancy. Okay, and now we can close that up. And now I can start. I should have used a different color thread for <laughs> this part of the class. Okay. All right, and now I'm just sewing at a three millimeter stitch length, riding that foot right along zipper tape. I promise once we're done with the zipper, it'll be easy to see my stitching. And we're going all the way down to the bottom. And I started at the top and we're going all the way down to the bottom. Back stitch. Oh. Okay. So there we go. So now um, that is stitched in place. Now, if you are not using pleather or leather, you can go and give this a good press and press this, this part back. 
Um, it just doesn't press very, I mean, pleather just doesn't press well, which is fine, or leather. You can give it a good finger press though. So if you're using any other material besides pleather or leather, go take this to the sewing machine and just press this back a little bit. That's just really gonna help um, with the next step, okay? So now I'm gonna go grab piece two and I'll meet you right back here. All right, so on our piece one, we have this all sewn to one side of the jacket. Now we are gonna sew piece two to this side of the, um, the other side of the tape, okay? And you're gonna see how this all makes sense because this side also gets sewn to piece three, but don't get confused. This the way that if you just follow, trust the process, follow along, it will make sense. So don't, if it's getting confusing and you're like, that shouldn't make sense. That's not the center front of the coat. It's not, but um, trust me, it will all make sense. So now what we're gonna do is we have, this piece is also gonna be longer than this piece. That's okay. Um, it's the, the jog here in the hem allowance when the facing gets sewn to it. Don't worry about it. But you should also have a notch here at the bottom of this. I'm actually gonna cut my interfacing just so we can. Um, also, this is fully interfaced on this side and I have my notches for my pocket zipper already marked. So just make sure you've got those. So now when this is asymmetrically sewn, this is where the zipper is going to live. So again, this will be right sides um, over here. And just like on the other side, we want, um, and that doesn't match up to the top either. Hold on, mark my other notch here. You should have a notch up here. This gets matched to a notch up here. Okay, so this feels like that the zipper just floats. So just like here, we're basically lining up our notches that are here. Remember, this is an eighth of the zipper is an eighth of an inch above. Um, we have our zipper all nice and sewn in on that side. So what I'm going to do next is we are now going to tape this to this side, to this piece. So again, make sure that your zipper is lying flat so it's right side up right now. Just real quickly gonna take the tape off, like so. And now we're gonna put right side down. And again, I am matching this notch that's down here at the bottom of the zipper, kind of with this notch. They aren't, together though because to be together your zipper would be flipped the wrong way um you're just kind of eyeballing it but basically you want the stop of this zipper to be an eighth of an inch um above that and honestly when you have things laid out the bottom of this should match with this bottom it won't match with this bottom because that's cut out but it will match with that bottom okay and now just like we did with the front Remember that zipper should be right side up. We're putting this side piece right sides together with the zipper. I'm just matching up that cut edge. And your top, you've got a little bit of a curve there. But your top, this notch here, once we get up to this, should be matching up with the top edge of your coat here. Give that a good press, okay? All right, now once we've done that, we are gonna flip this over because it's easier to sew if we can see our zipper. And we're gonna sew again, just like we did with our zipper tape up, but it, this is the wrong side of the zipper. So come back over to the machine and we'll do that. So when you've got everything, when you have your zipper tape, um, this is the wrong side of the zipper tape because it's right sides together with this piece number two here. You can see where you've got things that line up. Um, my interfacing is going past a little but lining up there. But obviously piece two does extend here in this part past piece one. That's okay, that's what we want. But we are an eighth of an inch above that notch there. So just like um, with the other side, well, okay, we are going to um, 
Run that foot right along those teeth. And this double, this stick tape just really comes in handy, folks. Okay, I'm going to get up about this far, and we are going to need to unzip our zipper. I'm just going to guess that it's not, well, we're just going to, I'm just going to go ahead. Wait. New machine. Back stitch there. And then I'm going to unzip my zipper. Try not to mess it up. <laughs> okay. All right. This is going really slowly. All right. For this side, um, we are going to stop early. So I am just going to sew this up to the uh, right before the zipper stop, and we're going to back stitch. I'm going to pull this off real quick. And what we're going to do, because this piece does get, um, it does show on kind of the right side because it gets caught in the seam allowance, and you'll see that in a second. But I'm going to take this excess zipper tape, this is why we didn't put um, sticky on it, and I'm just going to fold it kind of like at a right angle back into the seam allowance like that, okay? So we're just going to take that and fold it back into the seam allowance. And now I can continue up and just kinda help it through there. There we go. And then we'll cut off. All right. stitch there so there we go so we are stitched on both sides um, got a little bit of a thread nest there it happens <laughs> so we are stitched on both sides of the zipper there so now what we're gonna do is um, sorry this is up close really up close so we've got our zipper that's in really well here so I'm just going to completely unzip this zipper so that we can do our next step. So now we're gonna separate these two pieces and um, come back with piece three to put it on to piece two and then we will go to the next step. Okay, so now we've got piece three. Again, we've cut three of piece three. This one is the one that has the interfacing on the back and um, yeah, it doesn't have anything to mark, okay. <laughs> And now we've got piece two here that we just sewed our um, zipper two on the front. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera there. What I'm gonna do though, before we go any further, take my crappy scissors and I'm just gonna trim off the excess of this zipper tape that is coming off that edge. Also have some errant interfacing there. So I've just cut that flush with the edge of the um, piece just so it doesn't get confusing later on down the road. Okay. Now, this is the time where you're probably going to want to start using some clips. But we are going to sew piece two to piece three. I have tape stuck to my finger. Okay, so we are sewing this longer edge of piece three to piece two, okay? And we've got um, all sorts of little notches that we can line up. I would also like to point out that just like with the other side, remember piece two was a little bit longer because we have that jog for where the... Um, the facing goes on. I'm just cutting all of my notches, making sure they're all cut here just to make life a little easier on us. So we are going to be matching up this bottom notch here with this notch right here. 
So we're gonna have a jog of about that much from the bottom. So I'm gonna use, oh, throw a little binder clip to pin those together. And then we've got, the notches can be kind of hard to see because we have glued them shut. Well, we will be coming all the way up. Um, I'm gonna match this notch up here, matches with the top of the zipper. And then we're gonna go all the way up here to the top. And put a clip in there. And then the rest of this does, well, there are notches to match up folks, but I have kind of glued them shut with that. So we're just gonna ease this in. There's not too much to ease in here though. Okay. So there we go. So now we have our piece um, three up against our piece two. And I'm gonna sew these with um, my with this piece up. Now, our seam allowances are half of an inch. Obviously, I am not at half of an inch here. That's okay. I'm gonna start at half of an inch and then come and meet this line where I have sewn uh, the zipper tape in and then follow that along all the way down. And then when I get right here at the bottom, um, I will kind of go back to the half of an inch once I've cleared that zipper stop there, okay? Because the zipper just eats up some of that seam allowance, just the nature of the zipper. All right, so let's go back to the machine and um, sew that seam together. All right, so again, I'm sewing with piece two up. I also need to mark where my half of an inch seam allowance is on this new machine. All right. Well. Oh, and I need to make sure, put your needle back in its position. It needs to be back in its center position, otherwise your seam allowance is gonna be off. <laughs> okay. All right, so off I go to half of an inch seam allowance. Now, be careful when you're coming in um, this is a metal zipper stop here, and we're not even going to talk about how many. I'm just going to work my way over to this seam allowance. We are not going to talk about how many um, needles I broke when I was doing my daughter's leather coat. Okay, now we're just going to sew along. All right, and then we will backstitch right there. Okay, so now when we open this up, we've got this beautiful zipper, okay? And we will have the jog there, and that's what we're supposed to have, okay? But we do need to, yeah, that should be good, because we've got to be able to put this, um, feed that into the, zipper when we zip it up. All right, so our next step is going to be to press that seam allowance to piece two. So we're pushing the seam allowance. We want the zipper to sit kind of against piece three here. So we're pushing that seam allowance all to the same side here. And um, so go press it if you can press it. Um, and then come back here and we are going to top stitch it in place. Okay, so once you have pressed, I've not pressed mine because um, it's pleather, um, but I'm just going to top stitch. Now I've increased my stitch length to a 3.5 for this. You could also change your thread if you wanted to change your thread. If you are sewing with a leather or a pleather, you definitely um, want to top stitch because you can't press and this is gonna be your best friend. Now. For lining up mine, pick us a good spot on your um, your presser foot. I'm just gonna line up my seam right in the inside of this. So it's gonna give me, I don't know, a scant 
in between a quarter and an eighth of an inch, I guess. And I am just kind of pulling my seam allowance away because I couldn't um, uh, press that. And I am just going to, again, I've, I've increased my um, seam allowance to a 3.5. And when we get to the zipper here, we're just gonna go slow. When in doubt, go slow. But all of that seam allowance is pushed over to my right. I also have to say, I am very impressed with how this machine sews. This is one of my, this is my first project sewing on this machine. And it's been a while since I've done a lot of sewing on a home machine. I have worked on an industrial in the past. So this is kind of fun. All right, and then just like at the top, we're just gonna be careful when we get down to this part. When in doubt, go slow. All right. All right. So there we go. We should have a beautiful top stitching all along the zipper. And that's going to help this zipper push to the center front here. Um, just makes it easier to zip um, and to get that on and off. All right. Next up, we are going to be sewing piece four. Um, and this is where um, kind of where view A and B deviate. So let's grab your piece four and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so here's our piece, beautiful top stitching, laying all nice. So now we are gonna be sewing piece four onto piece two or onto piece one for the other side. But again, like I mentioned, this is where we deviate. So if you are sewing view B, you are actually gonna sew this piece all the way down to the bottom. If you are sewing view A, we are going to actually stop this right at um, about an inch above this pocket point. And I'm actually going to pin here because I want these pocket points. Now, this does leave a hole, um, but I'm actually going to pin right through that pocket point. And I can actually see where I put a pin through when I was marking it. <laughs> That's handy. But I'm gonna go up into the seam allowance from there. I would normally pin with my pen going this way, but I don't wanna pin into the body of the jacket because it does leave a hole. All right, I am making the GH cup. You can see there's a lot to ease in here. Don't panic, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'm just gonna match, <laughs> just gonna turn things and match up here with my clips. this spot here and then we've got some notches cashmere is so good about putting their notches in and i'm just gonna match all of my bus notches and that's the only thing i'm gonna pin i know a lot of people will put stay stitching in to try and ease things i'm gonna show you how i like to ease it works up my easing method does work a little bit better with fabric that has some give to it, but I was successful doing this with the leather, so I think we'll be okay. So there's three notches across the bust, and that's what I'm matching. Okay, and we want to stop about an inch above that point, okay? I am actually going to start, I want to sew with this really curvy piece, piece four against the feed dogs. Um, but before we do that, let's pin our other side as well, which looks a little bit different. Oops, I'm throwing things on the ground. So we've got our piece one here. Um, well, it should be kind of laying like that. We will top stitch this in place, just not yet. We got to get the facing and stuff on first. So now we're going to um, also sew piece four to this curved piece here. And again... For view B, you're going to go from the top all the way down here to the bottom. Um, that is not going to be, and they, they should match, your bottoms should match. But that's not going to be the case with view A. With view A, we are going to stop about an inch above this first. Oops. 
an inch above this first um, pocket notch here. And I am putting a pin, but again, I'm pinning into the seam allowance, not into the body. Okay, so let's match up our notches. Sometimes it's easier to pin your two end points in first and then ease in. I actually really like easing in. I know that it can be very frustrating and trying not to get puckers and all of that. I actually really enjoy it. It feels like sculpting fabric to me. Um, so I, I kind of like, you know, easing fullness in for the sleeves and the bust, which is good because I have a large bust. So I often have to ease a lot of uh, busties into things. Okay. So there we go. So let's go to the machine and we are going to sew from either from the top to an inch above, uh, inch-ish. It doesn't have to be an inch exactly. Um, we just need some wiggle room to get that zipper in. Okay. So I'm going to sew either from the top down or from the bottom up, but I just want to make sure that this really curvy piece number four is against the feed dogs. So let's go to the machine and we are going to sew these in. All right. So I've got piece one up. I'm going to take this out here and just set this that half inch and let's get it started. Oops. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put my finger, oh, there it is, in between these two layers, okay? So as... Um, I mean, you don't want to sew over your finger, obviously, but I'm just going literally inch by inch here, and I'm taking my hand in between these two layers here. Let's do that. Make that easier. In between these two layers, and I'm just pulling that real curvy layer back as I go. So I'm Basically, well, not basically, I am. I'm using my fingers to ease in that fullness. And as you saw, it's a lot of fullness. So you may see some rippling in this bottom part, but the stitch line is the same length. Okay, remember that. You get that excess that needs to be eased in because of um, the seam allowance. And again, this is a little more difficult. With the, um, with the pleather. However, I also want to say when you are sewing with that curvier edge under the feed dogs, you are allowing the feed dogs to do the easing for you. There. Okay, now we are coming up right here. This is my dot. I want to stop around an inch before that, okay? So we're going to go about there. And then... Okay, so there we go. So we've got nice and ripple there, but we don't have any puckers sewn into that seam. Um, we'll clip into that here in a second too, just to help that lie flat. But um, yes, that's exactly what we want. Okay, let's do the other side and I will do it on camera. I won't do all of everything, both sides on camera, but because these are two different um, they're asymmetrical. We'll do that on, we'll do this one on camera. Okay, so here's my dot. I'm starting an inch above this. This is piece uh, two, uh, two <laughs> that's up. And we're sewing piece four to it. And I'm going to start about an inch-ish above that dot. This is the straighter area, so I don't need my fingers in there yet. And guys, just go slow. 
When in doubt, raise your presser foot if you need to, if you're getting things a little crazy, especially if you're using, I mean, if we were using, if I were using wool right now, this would be easing in like a dream. So the less give you have in a fabric, and there's basically zero in <laughs> pleather, um, the harder that's gonna be, but it's not impossible. Look at that. And again, let the feed dogs do the work for you. They want to do all that easing. All right, so there we go. Again, we don't have, we've got the rippling of the seam allowance there, but we're good on um, no puckers. So that's really, really lovely. All right, I am going to go really quickly. Well, here, let's come over here. And I am going to um, clip into the seam allowance. nice scissors that I don't have in this room. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be right back and we're going to clip into the seam allowance before we move on to our pockets. Okay, so I did some work off camera. Um, I'm seeing some threads here just so um, I can show you where we're going and then we will do, you know, because the sides are done the same. Okay, even though they are asymmetrical, the pocket parts are in fact done the same. So on, just pricked myself with a bit. <laughs> so on the um, right side when worn, I've gone ahead and put that pocket in, um, which is right here. My zippers are stiff. Um, a little soap, bar soap, put on those zipper poles or candle wax will do wonders there. But there is my finished little zipper. You unzip, I'll show you the back side here in just a second. You've got my sturdy um, cotton pocketing. I have my seam allowance pressed, well, pressed open. Oh, that one didn't get caught, that's okay. Um, stitched open, basically. I have clipped into that real um, curve. We've got the pocket piece all done and ready. So now we are going to do this on the other side, the left, is that right? Yeah, the left side when worn. So I'm gonna put this piece to the side. So these are done the exact same way, um, just with one side, you're dealing with piece one, and the other one you're dealing with piece two. So I'll be dealing with piece two because I'm doing the left side when worn, but it's done the same way. So hopefully it won't be too confusing. So the first thing I wanna do, I have my pen still in here from when I sewed that seam. I'm just gonna take that out real quick, and I'm gonna clip into my seam allowance just so this lays a little flat. The instructions have you do this a little bit later um, after the zipper is in, but I just thought it helped things. <laughs> when If you're doing the GH cup, it just helps things. I am literally just cutting into the seam allowance too, but not through that stitching line. Um, about every half inch to five eighths of an inch. The real steep bust curve here, I'm going about every half inch. Just so we can get that to lie nice and flat. Okay, it's kind of a pain when we are, when we are, um, well, it wouldn't be a pain if you could actually press this and it would stay, but we can't. So it's a little bit of a pain when we go to top stitch, but not too bad. All right, <clears throat> next we have our zipper. Now I had to go ahead and shorten my zipper. You need your zipper to be six inches from the zipper top to the bottom of the zipper. I just, and I, and I could only find a seven inch zipper or a five inch zipper. So I went with the seven inch zipper and I just shortened it an inch. I just measured from the bottom of this stop up to the point and I marked it with my marker just like I did on the, the front zipper and then I shortened it the same way. These are locking zippers, they're kind of annoying to, there we go. <laughs> I marked it with um, the marker on both sides with my friction marker. Pulled the teeth off just the same way and then put new zipper top, new zipper um, top stops there. I, you know, you could also go through and put the, um, the thread bar there as well that we talked about. These are the old tops of the zippers. So before we do anything else, I just want to get those out of there because I don't want to accidentally sew over anything. So I'm just going to cut the tape off right below those old stops. I still want plenty of zipper tape to play with. 
but that way I don't accidentally hit anything metal. We don't want to break a needle. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to do a little bit of prep work before we actually put the zipper in. You're going to want a nice um, ruler and also some chalk. Um, you could use a friction pen if it disappears fine on your fabric, but I, since I'm using pleather, the chalk works just so well. So a little chalk runner is fine. We'll use that in just a second to mark our sewing lines. But before we get into that, I want to put some glue down. So I'm just going to close my zipper and I'm going to put some of my wonder tape down on my zipper. Starting and stopping at the zipper stops, both at the top and the bottom. Because I do want the top and the bottom of the zipper tape to be free, and you'll see why in a minute. Pressing that down really, really well. Okay, so we've got that all taken care of. The next thing we want to do is we want to mark between our dots. Now, I can see through onto the right side where my pins went through for my dots, but you may need to stick pins up and just mark dots on the right side of your fabric, but you are going to want to be able to see where your um, pocket points are on the right side of your fabric. And basically, here, I'm just going to this gets a little fiddly just because you've got that already sewn to it. I am going to connect my top dot and my bottom dot. You're going to notice that the seam allowance does not stay consistent because there is a curve there. But guess what? My zipper does not curve. So I'm just connecting my two dots. And now I can see my spot there. I'm just going to make a horizontal line at the top and bottom there. I can see where that comes through. Yeah. And this brushes away really easily. So I'm just going to mark this on both sides. This one is even curvier than, so piece four is curvier than um, piece two or piece one, but um, so the seam allowance gets kind of small right in that area. But it will all work out. Okay. So this really helps us when we're actually putting the zipper in. Okay, so now we can set those aside now that we've marked our zipper placement. So what we are gonna wanna do is we want to um, flip, we're gonna do piece four first, which is this piece over here. My zipper's right side up here. I'm actually gonna turn it over wrong side facing down. And the goal is, is that you want um, this line to be your stitching line, okay? So first, I'm just gonna take off my one side of my glue here, glue tape. I want um, my zipper stop to be right in between these two lines. Now, I just sewed my other pocket, so I know that if I line up the zipper tape with this line, my stitching line running right through the middle of it, that that's about where I can get my stitching line. Just right in the middle. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and see, the reason I wanted this line to extend on either side is so I can see where to start and I can see where to stop. We're gonna have to do this in two passes just like we did the um, other zippers. So I'm gonna sew about halfway, move my, my pole and then finish it. But let's go to the sewing machine real quick and let's sew this in. Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. So I want to plant my needle parallel with this white line and I'm gonna run the outside of this foot right along the zipper teeth, and I've moved my needle to the far left-hand side. So hopefully that all makes sense. And my stitch length 
is at a 3.0. And now we're just gonna sew this in place. It's also, my machine is not wanting to register that I in fact do have thread. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop here. I'm going to unzip. This is a very stiff zipper. And now we will continue. Okay, and now I'm going up right to where I'm parallel with this line, one more, and then I'm gonna stop. All right, so now if we flip this over, we will see that we are in between our two dots. Pretty close, pretty happy with that. All right, so that is our first one. Now we're gonna go back and stick the other side of our zipper down. All right. So we have our one side of our zipper sewn down on piece four. And again, this, with a washcloth, this um, chalk will come right off. So don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, so when this gets turned, obviously right side, there's our zipper. There's the right side of the zipper. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold all of this over like so. So now our zipper is right side down and we're gonna um, do the same thing. I'm going to take my glue off. I'm actually gonna zip this up. Take my glue off, maybe, there we go. And again, I am lining up the center of that um, tape with that line. This gets a little fiddly on this side. I'm just gonna press it down really, really well, okay? So now we're gonna go to the machine and we are going to sew from, well, I gotta unzip this. Well, maybe, there we go. I'm gonna sew from the top. Um, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna sew right next to that zipper teeth again, back stitch, pull my zipper teeth up and then again, stop. So I'll be starting at the white line again and going down and stopping at the white line. So now let's go sew this in. All right, so I've got this under the machine. Again, we're just starting right at this white line that's just right there. So I am going to just anchor that right there. All right. Oops, I hit the wrong button. This machine um, has a lot of really cool features, but it is similar to my industrial, but not quite. So I keep um, backstitching and cutting off my tails when I really just want to raise my presser foot. <laughs> It's all a learning process, right? Um, I would also like to note that the seam allowance at the zipper is five eighths of an inch, but the seam above and below is half of an inch. Okay. Oh, right, let's see how we did. Oh yeah, we got off a little bit there, but I'm pretty happy with the way all of that is. Okay, so 
Now, we should also have our zipper tape free at the top and at the bottom here. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to clip into our, sorry, I didn't mean to hit that. Clip into our seam allowances just through the body of the jacket. Don't cut through your zipper tape. So if you need to kind of pull it, the glue off, but we're gonna cut um, from the seam allowance too, but not through the end of those stitching lines on all four. So just two, two, but not through. Again, you may have to kind of pull that zipper tape away from the glue, which is fine. It's sewn in there now, so. Two, but not through. And then the same on the other side. Okay, and now, this is really cool. We are gonna fasten, um, oh, we gotta finish sewing our seam first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, I'm actually gonna open up my um, zipper tape or my zipper pull to where it's like halfway just so it's not interfering with anything because now we're gonna close up our seam both at the top. Okay, I had to use soap to get this zipper undone. <clears throat> it should be working much better now. Okay, I wanna keep this at half mass right now so that we can do the rest of this jacket. Yikes, okay. So what we are going to do now um, is we are going to kind of pull the zipper tape out of the way and we are going to continue sewing down from where we stopped kind of to this edge. And remember, this is a half inch seam allowance. This is a five eighths inch, inch seam allowance. It will not meet up. That's okay though, don't worry about that. Um, because with all the top stitching and stuff, it'll be fine. And then we're gonna come down here and do the same thing, kind of starting at that little angle that we created and sewing down to the bottom at half inch. So let's get that done really quickly. All right, so we just wanna make sure <clears throat> that we don't get on our zipper tape here because that needs to be free. Oops, what are we doing here? All right, and this gets just a oh, little bit fiddly, and we also wanna make sure that your needle, you know, we've had our needle over at, um, at uh, to the left side of the presser foot, so you just wanna make sure that your needle is right back in the center again. Otherwise, you will not be sewing straight. We're just getting that in as much as possible there. I'm actually gonna sew going up this way. I found that to be just a little bit easier when I was doing that earlier. So now. So just wanna make sure we don't get that zipper tape. All right, so there we go. We've got our seam. So now, um, oh, let, me, let me bring you back over. All right, so now everything should kind of be lying flat. Um, if you have, let me move that out of the way. If you have fabric that can be pressed, now is a good time to go and press your seam allowances open. Mine, is not going to press, so <laughs> so we're just gonna give it a little finger press. Most especially right here um, at the edges that we just sewed. Because now what we are going to do is we, with this pressed, and again, we've clipped into that, okay? We are going, I'm a little nervous to zip this up. 
I'm not going to zip it up all the way. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this pressed open seam allowance, like so, to the zipper tape, and we're going to fold the body away, and we're going to stitch it down. Let me show you how I did that one more time, okay? So we have everything pressed open. So there's the right side. Hopefully you can tell the difference in the colors here. And we've got our zipper tape free. So we're putting the right side of the zipper tape, if you want to think about it that way, to the wrong side of the seam allowance. Like so. And now we're just gonna pick that up and kind of fold the coat in half at that point. And now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna stitch right along that spot. So we're making a box. So let's go over and stitch this down really, really quick. And then we'll do the end the same way. All right, so one more time for good measure. Our seam allowance is pressed open, zipper is pressed open. We've got zipper tape and the seam allowance like so we're gonna fold the coat out of the way and now we are just gonna sew you can kind of pull the coat a little bit out of the way because you you don't want to catch anything but um we're just gonna sew Right across there. And I can, I can still see my little dot that's there. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And then when it is up, your seam allowance is pressed open and then kind of pressed up on itself. So hopefully that makes sense. And then from the front, you get a nice box. Oh boy, I didn't mean to go that high. I think I've got a broken tooth in there. Okay, well, I'll fiddle with that here in a second. So now we're gonna, because um, we'll be sewing a box around that. Okay, so now let's do the same thing here with the bottom. I'll flip it over. So we've got our seam allowance pressed open. This is the bottom. Our seam allowance is pressed open and we're gonna put it up against our zipper tape, just like with the top. Fold the rest of the jacket out of the way. And. Okay. So it's sewn like so. So when it's all laid flat, that's kind of folded up over on itself. So hopefully that makes sense. Leave any comments you have down below. Um, I'm worried about my stupid broken zipper. I think I've got a funky tooth there that's causing issues. <laughs> I have to figure that out. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our pocket in, everything is zipping well. Um, or our, not our pocket in, our zipper is in. So we've got our zipper in. Everything, remember a little soap for a zipper goes a long way. <laughs> um, on the back side, I have also, um, somewhat pressed. I mean, I'm working with pleather here. We're doing the best we can, but go ahead and give everything a good press so that it's lying as flat as possible um, for these next few steps. But now we're going to put our pocket in and then after our pocket, we'll go through and top stitch this seam line, which will be important, especially if you're um, working with a fabric that doesn't like to press like I am. Okay. So let's, this is the um, right front one more. So this is piece one. This is piece four. So right front one worn. I'm going to flip this over. Um, you should have two pocket pieces. We have piece five and piece six. I've got those. I guess I should. There's six. Here's five. 
<laughs> and we want to make sure that we've marked our points on our pockets because that's going to come in very handy here in just a second. Okay, so we're going to set piece six aside here for just a minute because we're not going to use it quite yet. It's going to get used in the next step. But our next step is to put um, the pocket in. So we are going to be putting piece five right side of the pocket to our zipper. So the instructions have us grabbing the seam allowance that's here with the zipper and tucking the rest of that away, okay? Because we are only sewing where we have previously stitched. So you can go through and um, pin this if you would like, but the gist of it is that our um, dot, which my dot is, might be kind of hard to see. I have a dot there that needs to match up here at the bottom. And I'm gonna just put a pin, mostly because I am pinning through areas that aren't gonna be seen. And then it's a little harder to see my dot up here, but it's there. <laughs> and I want it to match to my point up here. Now it's hard to, I don't wanna, just kind of pinning things in place because it my zipper is in the way. Okay, so I'm going to sew with the jacket up so that I can stitch along my previous seam line. This is the seam line that sewed my zipper to the um to the front of the coat. So let's go over to the sewing machine and let's sew piece five to piece four. Okay, so I've got my needle all the way to the left so I can really run my um, edge of my presser foot. So I've got a Teflon foot on here right along the um, edge of the zipper. So I've got my needle all the way to the left and I'm just sewing right on top of that previous stitch line, which is, oops, sorry, which is where I sewed my jacket to um, the zipper. And you know, if you're not right, it's pushing a little bit. If you're not right on top of it, it's fine. Um, you also may have to make a couple of passes because just like with everything else with the zipper, your pull may get in the way. And I will, sorry, I'm just trying to raise my presser foot. Well, where is my zipper pull? See if I, no, I can't. Okay, so I'm just going to backstitch, unzip my zipper, and then start right back where I left off. And so right on up. to the second um, dot there. Okay, Oop, got things all tangled here. All right. So now we have that. So now, let's go back, let's go back over here and do it above. Okay, so we've got our pocket piece five sewn down. And um, what we're gonna do now is you need to take this over to a um, pressing surface and give this pocket a good press towards the side seam, okay? We just wanna give it a good press over here towards the side seam. Um, and then once you've done that, um, the instructions want you just to pin this to the side of the body just to keep it out of the way. But I don't wanna make um, any kind of marks in my pleather. So I'm just going to take a piece of this double stick tape that we've been using on our zippers, just a small piece, and I'm just going to, because this will lift up afterwards, but I just want to keep this pocket out of the way so I don't catch it in any of my other sewing. This is gonna be the name of the game, keeping our pocket pieces where they're supposed to be. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give that a good press um, and then come back here and we'll put piece six on. Okay, now it's time to put piece six on. 
So piece six is also going to go on to piece one. So this is this this is center front. This is piece one. Piece six is going to get sewn. And you could go ahead and just kind of lay it over here and kind of see how everything is going to go when all is said and done. You can kind of get a good orientation-ish. Now, it's not going to line up yet because this actually, it this piece five is going to look too big. But once we have, I mean, I've got it taped down. Once we have everything flipped over to the right side, everything is going to um, go together, I promise. So now... I'm just kind of wanting to make sure that the top and the bottom are matching up right now, okay? So we do have a gap here. That is fine at this point. Because again, once we get everything flipped over the correct way, it will all lay nice and neat. Okay, so again, I'm going to take my seam allowance, flip my jacket out of the way, and we are going to sew on top, just like on the other side, we are going to sew our pocket piece. This is piece six to piece one. Just like so, okay? So I'm just going to come over here and stitch notch to notch right up here, stitch along my previous stitch line and stop right here. Um, you don't need to watch me do this. I'm going to do it the same way I did piece five, but I'm only stitching through that seam allowance there. Um, keeping all the other pieces where they belong. And I'll do that, meet you right back here. Okay, so I have my pocket pieces, both sewn just to the seam allowance. Nothing is sewn through to the front of the coat. Um, and we wanna give everything a good press and to keep things out of the way. And instead of pinning, like um, the instructions say, I'm again just going to double stick this down to the front of the coat just to keep it out of the way for this next step. Okay, once we've got that kind of pinned and or, oh, got an excess thread there. That's going to, zippers do not like excess threads. Um, once we've got everything nice and pushed out of the way, if you want to go and give everything a good press again, we are now going to do a little bit of top stitching before we sew our pocket pieces together. So we are going to turn our jacket right side out. Or not right side out, <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> okay, um, and now we are going to top stitch. Um, I am gonna put, I'm gonna put two lines of top stitching on mine, but we'll do that in a minute. Um, you don't have to though, you can just put the one if that works for your fabric and you. But we're just going to do a top stitch on side of piece one, okay? So this is the side of center front, okay? So we are going to, and this is important because we don't wanna catch the pocket wrong underneath here. And again, our pockets should be completely splayed open on either side. So if you were to unzip your zipper, you should see, you know, table underneath because your pocket pieces are each going opposite directions. But what we're going to do is we're going to start up here and we're going to top stitch down to our zipper, box out, come down this side of the zipper, go back in and finish top stitching uh, down the other side. We are only doing that on for the, um, the side that is in center front. So in this case, it's piece one, towards piece one, okay? So let's go to the sewing machine. I'm going to increase my length to 3.5 mill millimeters and uh, let's top stitch this down. All right, so the first thing I want to do is make sure that my needle is back in center position. And then I'm taking my stitch length to 3.5. And now remember, we're sewing on, for this, for the right side of the coat, we're sewing on the right side of the seam, which is the seam towards center front. Now, we've notched our seam allowance, and so this gets a little tricky because I want to make sure that my seam is running right, um, that my, I'm not, catching anything. I want to try and keep my seam pressed open as much. So I'm going to have my hand underneath here, just hopefully encouraging. And I am just running this, my foot right along that seam line. And now we're just sewing. Uh, 
Okay, when we get down here to this pocket piece, we are just going to go slow. You don't want to accidentally hit any metal pieces. I'm going to go down, maybe one more. And I'm going to lift my presser foot. Remember, both my pocket pieces are going their separate ways. You may want to get under there and make sure that is the case. One, two. I'm going to go one more. And then... And you really want to make sure that none of that pocket's folding up underneath of itself because there is nothing more annoying than having to unpick because something got underneath something else. All right. And then we're going to finish off. Okay. So we have just top stitched along the center front seam. And if we flip it over, um, oh, I got caught one caught. Oh, you can't see it. Kind of yucky, but that's okay. <laughs> um, that can be hard. But my seam allowance is all nice and stitched down to the side of the coat, except where we got messed up here. But I'm not going to worry about that. I think that's probably okay. All right. Let's come back to the table, and I will show you what we're going to do next. Okay, now that we have top stitched on our front side, we are gonna flip this over and we still have our pocket pieces all nice. They should be one on each side. Um, we are now gonna sew these together. So what we're going to do is put your zipper about halfway um, at half mass kind of, um, just kind of keeps it out of the way for this next step. But we're gonna take piece five that's over here and put it on top of piece four or sorry, on top of piece six. And we are pushing all of this needs to all be going towards center front. And our seam allowance is nice and pressed open. And we are just going to pin, and your pocket pieces should now match up. So I'm just gonna put a few pins here. Okay few pins. So now we're going to go to the machine and I'm going to start on, um, I'm going to sew with piece six up just because I think it's easier to kind of get into this spot. And we're just going to sew all the way around to the bottom here. So let's go do that. All righty. So this is piece six that I'm sewing. This is center front that I'm sewing with piece six up. We are only sewing through the pocket bag. So I'm just going to get it under here. We're sewing it half of an inch seam allowance so I just want to get it right in there now remember to be careful because you if you especially if you've got zipper uh, metal zipper teeth we don't want to break a needle it's easy to do in these areas all right so now we're just going to sew starting at the zipper all the way around until we get back over here and just get as close as you can and we're going to close that up. All right. So now we have closed up our pocket. So let's go back and show see what the next step is. Okay. So now our pocket piece is sewn and we've sewn just kind of from this point here. So not from over here, but from over here. And we've sewn all the way around and stopped at this point where it gets connected to the zipper. Okay. We want to make sure everything is pushed over to center front. If you need to glue this down again or double stick it down um, or pin it, whatever fabric you're using, do that because we want this to stay facing towards center front for this next step. So just like we did before, we are now going to go and stitch. A, you've got two options here. You can either go and just stitch um, around the box from the seam line over, down, back um, to finish off the pocket, making sure that that pocket is to the center front. Or if you're using a difficult to sew fabric like I am and you want to keep it pressed open, I have sewn mine where we're going to go right here. Along, it's the same thing I did on this side, on this side. So I'm just sewing right along the seam line, down, gone around the corner, down, around the corner, and back, okay? With making sure that the pocket is all to the front, okay? 
So that is the next step. And again, you can just do a box around the pocket, not a full box, but if you sew around this side, you're gonna sew your pocket shut. So just sew along this back um, to finish that off. Or again, you can start at the top and go on the other side of your seam allowance, just depending on how you'd like to finish off your jacket, okay? So now that we've done that, um, and I don't need to show you that because I showed you how to do it on the other side. Now we're just gonna do bar tacks here to close off our top and our bottom. So let's go to the machine and do that real quick. Okay, so now we're just gonna finish off our pocket pieces. Now, depending on the fabric you use, you can do an actual bar tack, which is a really um, close and dense zigzag stitch. That would shred my pleather, so I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna just stitch across the top and the bottom here just to kind of secure those weakened areas. So I'm just gonna start right where my top stitching was, again, making sure that my pocket is to the front. It is right here. We wanna make sure nothing's folded over on itself, that everything's lying flat under there. And I'm just gonna sew from one side of the seam over to the other. You could do this a couple of times too if you'd like it to be nice and thick. Again, be very careful if you're using a pleather or a leather though, because that will eventually weaken that and it could tear. Got a thread stuck to my finger now. <laughs> and then we're gonna do the same up here. Being mindful of those metal teeth. And then we just want to trim any errant threads. Okay, so let's go back over to the table and let's see where we're stopping today. Okay, so we are stopping for today. So we should have our fronts completely done. We've got our zippers in, we've got our pockets in, um, our zippers are all nice and in. This is looking a little deflated because there's not a boob in it. Um, but yes, both pockets are going towards the front. There's our wrong side. So there are asymmetrical fronts all set and ready to go. So we're gonna stop for today and next time we'll come back and do our backs and um, get them attached to the coat and sew up our side seams. And then we will tackle sleeves and sleeve gussets. I will see you then. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, we have our two fronts, our asymmetrical fronts, constructed with our pockets if you're doing view A. Again, if you're doing view B, you can ignore all those steps and just sew your seam all the way down, top stitch it, and you're good to go. Um, just a little bit easier, this um, seam here. So, pockets are in, fronts are done. All right, as always, guys, if you have any questions at all, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer those as soon as possible. Um, next time, we will be constructing our back and collar, so and then putting the body of the jacket together um, with sleeves coming the part after that. All right, we're making our way. I'll see you guys next time.